G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. A few months ago, I brought up a little bit of a discussion about why the F4E pilots might be losing to MiG-21 BIS pilots. Now, this time around, because of the new event vehicle, the tables have turned just a little bit. So this makes me wonder what plane is actually better, because when you have a team full of F4Cs, it is pretty hard to play an F4E because everyone has less capable planes. But at the same time, if everyone is playing F4F early loser mobiles, then who is there to pick up the slack on the other end? That's right, it falls on you, the one guy that's left at the end of the match after about three minutes. And of course, this happens on both ends, and I have experienced both sides of this coin. So ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are wondering, well, the answer is kind of both, and it depends on the situation. So we're going to have a look here at the F4E first, and then we'll dive into the MiG-20 BIS. Now, I've made several videos on the F4E Phantom II, and the best way to play this plane is to exert your, your big muscle, your big uh, appendage, if you will, in the form of an AIM-7 at higher altitudes. Now, the AIM-7s don't really work that well at the lower altitudes due to ground clutter, which is the reason why there's a little bit of fuzzy green stuff on that radar off to right there on the screen. So what we're going to be doing is going for a bit of a gentle climb. Now, you might think, why not just pitch this thing up at 35 degrees? Well, you could kind of do that, but I do want to get a little bit of separation and I uh, want to change the angle that I come from in the, these engagements. Most of the enemies will sort of climb over that mountain range to the south, um, kind of between the two airfields. Most people will sort of just make a bootleg for each other's airfield. Um, but in this case, what I want to do is come a little bit from the side because if I can do that, then that means that they're probably not going to be paying attention to me. And therein lies the kicker. If you're going to get dogpiled in any other jet, to be honest, I would prefer nothing but the Phantom. Because the Phantom can climb, it can keep its speed, and of course you have plenty of flares to boot. Whilst the MiG-21 has a better climb rate and is in some cases a lot faster at sea level and uh, a little bit at altitude, the Phantom just has that ability to just keep running. Of course, if you're going to be turning as well, it retains a lot of retain retain retains a lot of energy in a turn because I can speak. Now, the Phantom here is one of those planes that is more of a missile carrier than a dogfighter. You might say, well, oh no, this plane is an interceptor, that plane is an interceptor. I don't really care. In War Thunder, the way it happens is the Phantom is the big fat heavy missile carrier and the Russian MiG-21 BIS is the lightweight dogfighter, if you will. You could kind of equate all of these typical planes to uh, props at similar tiers. So, for example, I would equate the uh, MiG-21 BIS to, say, the Yak-3. I would equate the F-4 Phantom to something like a P-47 or even a, a Super Corsair. I could equate the, um, the, the Draken. I could equate that to a Zero or something else that's really lightweight. The Mirage is kind of similar. I could kind of equate that to a zero, but not, not quite the same. The, the point I'm getting at is a lot of these planes have a set play style, and a lot of these play styles are very sort of similar to other planes that are at higher levels in the tech tree. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pick targets that are vulnerable, and then just chase or dive or boom and zoom these targets. And that's exactly what you have to do in the Phantom. Once you're done exerting your AIM-7s on those poor high altitude scrubs that don't really have the ability to detect you with their RWR or alternatively force down opponents, or in this case here, I'm able to actually use an AIM-7 for some odd reason. I think it's the altitude. I think it might be the mountain ranges. You never know. This Jaguar is going to get itself a nasty surprise. You can do these cheeky missile strikes, but you have to be careful that you're not the only one that is going to be doing that. If you're going to head on something like a Mirage or a, a, a MiG-21 SMT or a MiG-21 BIS, you can't be doing this sort of stuff because they also have that ability to do that. So you're going to have to joust with the longer pole, meaning you have to go at longer altitude. So once you have flexed that muscle, start looking for teammates that are in a need of a little bit of help. So the MiG-21 there that was passing by looked like he might have been a suitable candidate for an A9J, but unfortunately he pulled away too early and gave me a bit of a hard shot, so I'm not going to release a missile if it's not almost guaranteed to hit. I don't want to be speculative and I don't want to be reckless. Now, I know that's a Mirage 3E, 
Mirage 3Es are the only Mirages that have flares, and they are also the only Mirages that eat a million hamburgers a day and are absolutely jam-packed with everything to the point where they just they're just fat. They just they, they they chonk, man. They chonk. And they're so chonk that they just it, it's it's very sad to uh, go into a fight with a Mirage 3E. And trust me, I have tried to get some footage for that thing. It is a chonky plane, but when an opportunity presents itself like that, that is a situation that you just have to take. And you have to be ready with the selection of your correct missiles and the selection of guns and of course that aim to pull that off. Now the Phantom easily gets the best gun in the game. I would say that the MiG-21 the MiG pales in comparison and even the Defers pale in comparison to the might of the Vulcan. That Burt is just absolutely sensational and it is a fantastic weapon. Not only that but you get plenty of ammunition and of course at Jet Tier where everyone has fairly limited ammunition that is an extra bonus. You can get five kills just on guns just because of the ability and the ease of use of this this weapon system. It's just easy and the Phantom works very much so on playing methodically. If you can play where you have a, a situation where you're on top and you're working your way down slowly but surely to the lowest opponents then you're going to have a much easier time than if you decide to go in at sea level and try for chaos and dogfights. The Phantom works in a situation best where there are a couple of them doing that and of course when you have that situation, lone MiG-21 bisses at high altitude are just going to have to scramble down to the deck. So without further ado, let's have a look at the MiG-21 bis and actually see what they can do to stop the Phantom Menace. See what I did there? We're in the MiG-21 bis here and I've taken three uh, or a different loadout here. So I have the R3Rs, I have two of them and I have four R60s. So in this particular situation I take R3Rs just to maybe go for a cheeky head on or alternatively to go for those very high altitude targets that aren't really a threat to me but might be a threat to somebody else. There was a beautiful kill that I got earlier today where I was up at high high altitude maybe 6,000 meters and or 4,000 meters, and there was a target at 8,000 meters. I zoom climbed up and managed to save a teammate from a Mirage who wasn't ready for my shot, and the R3R is one of those missiles that is really good for that. Of course, it's also really good for those sneaky head-ons where you can release a missile at about two kilometers and it will start tracking quite nicely, giving your opponent very little time to pull off. Now, you can see from my RWR that I'm being spiked by a, uh, a target there now I don't know who it is, I don't know what it is, but I do see an AIM-7 and an F-4E. Missile 1 comes out, Missile 2 comes out, and we're about to get Missile 3 and 4 on the way, just like they're delivering candy at a, at a candy shop. Except this candy has a, a very, very bad effect on the health, unlike uh, regular candy, which is also really bad for your health. So, this particular specimen absolutely blows his load over the top of me, and... Uh, and I'm not going to take that lying down, so he's going to spread his legs as well and get himself a nice big R60 straight up the exhaust. And, uh, oh man, that just... To me, situations like that are a little bit frustrating because you get people that just launch every missile at you and decide that, you know what, they're just going to do that. But it's okay because we, we got it in the end. So... Let's continue the carnage and see where we can go with this particular strategy. The MiG-21 is one of those planes that works best on chaos, and if there are F-4Es that are at low altitude, you are pretty much better at making that a situation, or, or better at making that a little bit of a, a fun field day, than making a sort of systematic battle. And for me, playing the F-4E is a little bit relaxing compared to this plane, because you really do have to keep an eye out and keep your head on a swivel. With the F4E, you just sort of work your way through methodically, look at your radar, check around, make sure there's no enemy within, you know, eight kilometers that's a threat. Whereas with the MiG-21, you're like, well, there's an enemy within three kilometers and they're diving on me and I have heaps of enemies around me. But it's okay because this is where the MiG-21 bis sort of thrives. Now, Harrier is looking like a juicy target, but unfortunately doesn't line himself up properly. There's an F4E that's also looking fairly juicy. I check that F, uh, that Harrier to make sure he's behaving well. Second R60 looking very fine. And an F4EJ that could potentially be a threat but is going down. Uh, I'm going to finish him off with a quick burst of 23s. And that's three very easy kills. Notice a pattern here. You're going to be going after those slow targets. But in this case, I am still on the back foot because MiG-21 
does not particularly like AIM-9Js. Now, I get myself out of the way of the F4E and decide to go for the other F4E, not realizing that there is that original one still riding up my backside. So what I'm gonna do is look for the Harrier there and the Harrier is kind of locking up, but it's not really going to be doing anything for me. So I'm not gonna take the shot. Remember, you don't have those extra two missiles that you do have in the uh, Phantom, so you have to be extremely careful with what you do. Now, this Harrier may have had me, but what I decided to do is pop a couple of flares preemptively and decide to get myself into a 2v1. Now, the Harrier kind of counts as a half, so I'm going to call it a one and a half versus one because the Harrier is very, very bad at its low speed maneuverability. He pops up on the spotting system in front of me and I give him a little bit of a burst, which puts a uh, big hole in his left wing. Getting out of the way of the F4 here, I'm going to avoid the 20mm fire because that stuff is extremely deadly and as he goes to the vertical, I'm going to try and nose back onto him. I'm managing my throttle here and I'm doing a lot of things to make sure that I don't fall up in front of the F4E's guns and of course, now that I've seen the Harrier heading back to base, I basically have my way with this F4E. As I go down, I pick up a little bit more speed, and as I go up, I pick up a little bit more turning with the flaps, and I cut the afterburner, which does do a surprisingly large amount for just in general maneuverability. Now, as my friendly comes in, he manages to distract the original Phantom and brings a friend along with him. The first Phantom there manages to get himself a uh, lovely R60, and now I'm basically down to my R3s. I don't have any other missile except for these two, and I have two shots to get a kill with a, uh, a missile that basically pulls as much as an AIM-9B, but is radar guided or semi-active radar homing, and it's going to be a tough slog. I need him to, I, I need this F-104 to bring the Phantom towards me because I need maybe a kilometer and a half to two kilometers at my best. So here I go. I'm going to launch one missile straight at the Phantom. But unfortunately, he ducks out of the way just in time, giving himself a lucky window for a little bit more survival. Now, the F-104 is in a dire situation here because the F-104 cannot outmaneuver an F-4E at these types of speeds, but the F-4E has put himself in a shit position by being nice and slow and turning too much, and that gives me a very easy kill. Kill number seven. Wow. Absolutely wow. In a situation that is chaotic, Phantoms just absolutely die. In a situation that is methodical, the Phantoms will absolutely club and the MiG-21s will die. It also depends on how many loser mobiles you have on your team, whether it be F4F earlies, F4Cs, A7Ds, Harriers, you name it. If the team is absolutely jam-packed with meta vehicles, it's going to do better. But one-on-one -on -one or four-on-four, MiG-21 BIS versus F4E, there is no winner unless the situation is uh, starting to pan out and you can see a pattern evolving. Like I said, F4Es survive in that absolute beautiful methodic me methodology. Methodic. It, it, it likes a methodic situation, okay? And the MiG-21s survive in chaos. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you found this a little bit insightful. Of course, the MiG-21 BIS and the F4 are two of my favorite jets in War Thunder, and whilst they are frustrating at times, they do bring me a lot of fun and a lot of joy. Anyway, ladies and gents, so that'll do it for today. If you guys want me to, you know, talk about a bit, bit about how the channel might be going or what I might be thinking, let me know in the comment section below and I might throw that in at the end of a couple of videos. Or if you'd rather me keep it to Instagram, let me know as well. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciated your time. Take care and I'll catch you next time.